Welcome to another episode of That's Not the Finish. So, recently we have just witnessed the AEW, the All Elite Wrestling Rally. We've also paid our viewership to one of the greatest events of wrestling history, Wrestle Kingdom, specifically Wrestle Kingdom 13. So, we're going to be discussing the AW, the AEW <laughs> Rally and also the events of Wrestle Kingdom 13. So, let's kick things off here. So, what do you guys think of the AEW Rally exactly? Just generally, uh, I liked it. I mean, it it was nice. I, my my one like main gripe that I had with it was they didn't really give us a lot of information. Like, I just wish they would have gave us a bit more than what they gave us. I mean, what they gave us was the basics of like everything we knew already. Like, like oh, all extra. right, we're g- <laughs> they gave a little bit extra, but it was all like <laughs> the general shit that we knew already. Like I wanted to to like know more about what they were actually planning and what they like what they had like in store for us. Yeah, but I, I mean, could, yeah, I could kind of see what you well, mean. It was just kind of the like the just still like the the surface of it in a sense. But they're kind of teasing uh, a little bit more yeah. like each time. You know, uh, I thought like for the but honestly, I have to agree with you though. I thought for the press conference, I thought it was going to be a lot more than what they really yeah. showed us. You know. Well, uh, just for the people that didn't get to watch the rally, uh, can you guys like give a synopsis of exactly what <laughs> happened? Since Moses is, in fact, one of those people. Ah, <laughs> right. uh, uh, thanks for throwing me under the bus, you dick. Well, you know, that was, it has to happen. I was trying to be, <laughs> I was trying to be subtle about it, but nah, well, I just, had to right there. I just had to, uh, you know, insert my dickness into that, uh, <laughs> into that saying. Yeah, and I think you. You know, you got that. Uh, uh, so, pretty much, I, uh, pretty much like the main big parts of the rally was that they already were kind of reiterating a bit, and they basically just said who uh, who was already signed by AEW, and then they also announced that uh, uh, Joey Janela, Janela uh, Pen- and Penelope Ford are going to be also signing with AEW. Uh, Pack also made a surprise appearance, and he's supposedly going to be going up against. Uh, hangman for the AEW championship. Uh, they also said um, uh, Brandy actually came up and also said that uh, with, uh, with the women's division, they're going to try to make it perhaps the strongest in the world. Uh, that's also going to include equal pay for women. Uh, mm-hmm. dep- you know, like also kind of like depending like on how early they are into the career. She actually uh, spe- uh, she also specified this better like on uh, on Twitter. Uh, she went into more detail, but she basically said that. It doesn't mean like if like a woman just got into a AEW that she's going to be getting like the same pay as like Chris Jericho or something like that. Mm-hmm. She said if you're starting off, you're going to have the same amount of money paid to you as uh, a wrestler that's just starting off, like a guy or a girl. It doesn't matter. So uh, like the other, the bucks. other, yeah. <laughs> the other big announcement here was that they're going to be working with a Chinese promotion which is called OEW. I actually just was looking into them a bit. Uh, and they have a lot of um, like, it's almost like, uh, like a bunch of cruiserweights. Uh, they have like a lot of, uh, very agile guys on there. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. It's I, haven't, very small. I haven't had a chance to check them out, but oh, I mean, just the cool. description that he gave, it sounds very intriguing to me. Oh yeah. Which, mm. uh, yeah. It's like the first Cirque, Chinese. Cirque du Soleil meets Kung Fu meets wrestling. Which exactly. Like, what? Yeah. yeah it's crazy that, stuff. That, yeah. That's that uh... the description that they gave about, about this group that they're going to be working <laughs> Wow. With. Yeah. That's uh, I mean, I'm intrigued. That, I haven't had a chance that's, to look them up, but that's probably a Jap, uh, sorry, a Chinese spin on like what 205 Live should have been. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to call it that, but like a Chinese. I'm, I'm very interested to see what they what they're gonna be offering to them. Oh, same here. And yeah, that's gonna be good. The last big thing I guess we could say is that Britt Baker came on and you know said some stuff um, during the press conference. And the other thing was that Jericho made like a surprise appearance at the <laughs> end of the press conference. Yeah, yeah and that was huge. He said, "Well, that broke the internet." What he said was, "Uh, you know, I'm not here for the money. I'm just here because I want to do stuff differently." And I mean, like, obviously, like that's what Jericho has been like proving so far with him going to New Japan, with him starting up a cruise line. He's just trying to sort yeah. of show like WWE. That there's so many, you know, like there's a lot of other competition out there. 
Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I yeah. mean, like, we're gonna go into each of these parts, uh, these points here mm -hmm. individually. They also they announced uh, the the location for Double or Nothing is Las Vegas. The yeah, May twenty, May twenty fifth, May twenty yeah. fifth. And that too, and which makes buy your tickets. Yes. <laughs> I uh, mean, and Dom, like the the first show is yeah. gonna be in uh, Las Vegas, right? So yes. Mm -hmm. And the second show is gonna be in Jacksonville. Yeah. Yes, they announced yeah. the second show okay. that's going to be happening in Jacksonville as okay, well, but they okay. didn't give information on that yet. Gotcha. I was just, uh, yeah, like trying to, yeah, I was just getting that straight there. All right, cool, cool. But yeah, yeah also, that's what also, I'm like, um... concerned about. I'm, I don't know if they're going to be like a couple of shows a year thing, or if they're actually mm -hmm. going to be doing like a full-on production, or like that's what I really wanted to know. It's and probably going to be how like, WWE God was. <laughs> Back when uh it it just started, like WWE never really wasn't televised until 1993, and you know before then they only had WrestleMania, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, and uh, SummerSlam, and uh, you know those were the you know obviously that's why they're, they're called the core four, but those were the four pay per views that WWE only came out when they were like a small they were still like you know relatively small in the industry. And uh, I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to have, like, a core set of, you know, um, production. Well, they might do, like, production here or there, but I see them mainly, like, going and doing the WWE approach of, like, let's start off small and then build our way up into, like, something, you know, pal um, you know pretty much pal palatable, you know? Yeah, I also heard that they're uh, they're trying to get a TV deal on Tuesday nights. Apparently, so I'm not sure. Oh man, they are if they're gonna <laughs> once smack that moves to Friday night. So, I mean, I don't know what TV deal they're trying to get, but it's such a be interesting yeah. and how so that happens. I guess that's all stuff we're gonna have to see down the line, further down yeah. the line. Sounds like TNA mm -hmm. all over again. <laughs> oh, in a way. Ah, uh, well, TNA here's the thing nights. with TNA. They they messed up with uh, you know. Getting Hulk Hogan to, you know, get his be on his ego trip as usual. <laughs> and then, you know, they try to fix things with Dixie Carter. And that was just like, uh, why? <laughs> don't, don't, you know? Yeah. And then that just, yeah. well, we know the results of that. Um, exactly. So, like, what do you guys think of the new signees with uh, Janela, Ford, Pac, uh, Hangman, the OEW guys? How do you think they're going to fare in, uh, in AEW? I think they'll do pretty good. I was surprised they uh they got Pack actually. That that one kind of shocked me yeah. a little bit. Do you yeah. think that Janelle is gonna be like perhaps like the biggest uh the biggest star on the roster? <laughs> he could be the biggest and also the craziest. That guy is <laughs> uh, not he's not normal. He's a train wreck, just like ready to go. <laughs> like so, I can't really speak. Like I know his name and I know he does a lot of stuff, but I'm not like familiar with his work really, so I can't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I've. Seen, I've seen him once wrestle Jimmy Havoc, I think, at a progress show in the city uh, one year I went. They they, they use cinder blocks. They use like chairs. Oh like God. it was it was insane. Uh, like Dave, I was like, Dave, yeah. Uh, you sure you didn't go to? His... Sorry, oh, just one second. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, Janela, he actually mm -hmm. climbed. I actually saw this from a match that uh, my friend posted up. I think he mm -hmm. was this guy that uh, he climbed into like a car and he actually like drove and he clotheslined a guy like out the window. <laughs> Oh, oh really? I, I think I saw that. I think that oh, was Janela. What didn't we see that in Botchamania, Dom? Wasn't that awesome. uh in a Botchamania? And uh shout out to Matthew with that all that great content <laughs> with uh, Botchamania. <laughs> no, and no, we're not sponsored by them. But nope. it would be nice. <laughs> Vince might get our content taken down if that was the case. <laughs> but no, it's YouTube. It's YouTube that we would have to worry about. Mm. Oh, but uh Honestly, I mean, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying, I mean, the the pack signing was huge. That was that one came out of nowhere. I don't think yeah. anyone was really expecting that one. Yeah, Hangman Page is another big name for them to get. I mean, and Chris Jericho obviously is like one of the biggest names that you can get. I mean, <laughs> that really just cemented their like, what yeah, actually, and, like how big of a company I mean, they're actually trying to be. We're probably gonna see Kenny Omega jump to uh, jump to yeah, the I, would, I, I wouldn't discuss that later. Omega joins. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised either. Yeah, I think it's gonna happen eventually. I, I so. was honestly <laughs> expecting him to be there 
at the press conference. Mm. I, I think that they're gonna have him drop in, maybe like in the first show or like the first, um, like first two shows or so. Like he's probably gonna jump in some time, like with one of those shows, just to make like a mm-hmm. surprise appearance. I think they're trying to keep him, uh, like just like under mm-hmm. the carpet right now, so that people like, are not expecting him to come. But then all of a sudden he's gonna be like, "Whoop, here I am." Well, there's also yeah, well, change the we'll, world. We'll also find that out if he shows up at the Royal Rumble or not. As well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's but, so many rumors I mean, out there right now about like, oh, he's. Coming I, to I really WWE, don't see him going, going to WWE, WWE personally. So but I think his but, I think his contract ends on 31st, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah, okay, so he would so be breaching this contract if he was he to show be up. Able to show up at Rumble. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think he'll be at the Rumble. I don't think so. <laughs> so then. Yeah, no, that's no, all the question. Forget <laughs> I said that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I Sorry, don't Dave. See him signing with WWE. Sorry that. Anymore, so. uh, it, it's okay. I mean, the thing is that yeah, I actually was thinking that it would be really awesome to see Kenny at the Royal Rumble, but mm. of course, the uh, someone clarified it to me that they actually said that he would be in breach of his contract with New Japan if he did go to the Rumble. Right. So, yeah, he, mm. don't expect Kenny at the Rumble. Like, okay. it's definitely not going to happen. No, that's fine. Yeah, sorry, I mean, Dave, I wasn't no, expecting him on it anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> It was a possibility. Yeah, I mean, I posted up like this one, um, like, oh, this is like the uh, this is a great way to troll people with uh, um, at the Royal Rumble. You know, if they, mm-hmm. they had like Kenny, uh, Kenny Dystra come out <laughs> instead of Kenny Omega. Uh, uh, I, I really uh, hope we, they do that. Or Mr. I, Kennedy. If it, yeah, I would prefer Mr. Kennedy just because, like, uh, I yes. think I think Mr. Kennedy will have a bigger impact. Uh, uh, than Kenny Dykstra. I think Kenny Dykstra would be able to do it because Kenny Kenny has been doing indie work lately, and he's really like killing it as a heel in the indies right now. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm saying like there's a sense you, you got to remember that some of these people that watch WWE do not watch indie stuff either. They just yeah, watch. That's true. Like you know, like loyalists. Like the, you'll say, oh, uh, well, Kenny. Saying, Dyk- they wouldn't. They're not going to know who Mr. Kennedy was. Like is regardless if that's the, the same case. <laughs> Kennedy. Mm, you never know. <laughs> you never know. I, I mean, know. I'm just saying, like, not as a sense of, like, oh, you know, this person started watching, like, a year ago, but, like, more or less, you know, someone, like, let's say some, um, you know, like, let's say our buddy Mark, uh, you know, took a break on Twitter one day and was watching the Royal Rumble. And he was watching WWE back then during the Ruthless Aggression era. Now, I feel like it would be a bigger impact. And I'm not saying I'm not discrediting Kenny at all. Um, but, you know, it would be a bigger impact, you know, to see Mr. Kennedy come in and, you know, see him with that mic in his hand because it would be like, oh, man, I remember how much I hated this guy because this guy was a jerk. <laughs> and, you know, like, yeah, Kenny Dexter is killing it as a heel in the indies but i think i think mr kennedy can pull off a lot of heat if he did it oh it's, yeah definitely it's personal. Oh, yes. <laughs> either one or <laughs> or just have john cena do it <laughs> i mean <laughs> that works <laughs> yeah why not so you think that if they were to bring back one of the Kenny's, I guess, if we were to call it that, you would say that Mr. <laughs> Kennedy would obviously receive the bigger pop, even though that Kenny Dystra is oh, yeah, killing I think, it on the indies. I, I think, yeah, because, uh, you know, there were, I remember there were people like, you know, like, remember, this is a couple years back, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, uh, Mr. Kennedy's going to be back, Shelton Benjamin's going to be back, Carlito's going to be back. Like, expect those articles and rumors to come back in a couple of weeks. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, and, and just remember, like when when Kenny was in WWE, he was known for the Spirit Squad, and the one that was supposed to break, uh, break out of that group was supposed to be Mikey. Mm. Mm. Turn out to be. And the one that, yeah, and the one that actually broke out <laughs> no one, no one, no one, was Dolph. No one <laughs> the Dolph. Yeah, but exactly. I mean, hey, that was a good choice. I mean, look at him now. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, like here with the you know WWE about like you know the, the Kenny debate here. Uh, well, who who would you want to see? Uh, not just with the Kennys, but anybody exactly. But who would you want to see wrestle in AEW that has not been signed yet? Hmm. Um, Honestly, that hasn't been signed. What? I would say uh, Neville because well, well, he has been. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, what? He, he, we're being trolled again, <laughs> which is a pack, but yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, wait, wait, I'm wait! Not... You're telling me, you're telling me that this new guy's name, this new guy is Neville. <laughs> what? Let's drop him on this. Dun, right, dun, right, dun, fine. Fine. Train and fine. 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 You're telling me Matt Bloom is Lord Sensai and, and the A-Train? Yeah. <laughs> Next, you're going to tell me the Undertaker's not a dead man. Uh, I mean, he's very All much right. alive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good roll right there, though. Uh, realistically, um, was J- nah, I would say, honestly, even though we saw him in All In, probably Jay Lethal or like Flip Gordon. You know, I feel that they will eventually come. Um, yeah. yeah. Here was one uh, really good choice that one of our Twitter followers posted up. Uh, but Killer Cross. Ooh. Killer Cross would be yeah. Be yeah. Or uh, the Natural Geographic commentator, uh, Loki. That I would like to see. <laughs> Loki. Loki. <laughs> Just watch as I... I, I would really like to see Goldust leave WWE and go there. Mm. And, Yo, he should become like, zero. Nah, <laughs> now you're pushing, <laughs> pushing it, buddy. Are you serious? But, oh god, you, you need a. I think I think Goldust uh, should go and and follow his brother's footsteps and prove to to WWE what they've been like that. He he deserves to be treated better as well, and he should be like given a good chance over there. So, so Dom, I mm-hmm. want to ask you this: Do you think that yes. Goldust would take on a new gimmick when he would go if he would go over to AEW? Do you think I, he I think he would just go in as as Dustin Reynolds and not take on like just as him, as himself and not felt like not necessarily take a full gimmick, just as Dustin Reynolds or like something well, similar to that. The that thing is, sense. with Goldust, is that like yeah, like to piggyback off of what Dom is saying. You know, he what is he gonna do? He can't be Goldust because the WWE are gonna try no, to sue him. But I mean, his his own personal name is still well enough known. That, I mean, oh yeah, well mm-hmm. uh, that's what that's why I'm agreeing with you. That yeah. hence hence the word piggyback because I'm jumping onto your thought. <laughs> but <laughs> no, but uh, you know, like WWE, you know, they have the Goldust property. Um, I don't think there's really any other. Any other gimmick he could do, uh, you know, that but, would make uh, him I mean, stick he out. But even need a gimmick, though. It, exactly, he, he could just he, be himself. He just, do, he just goes like in as himself. Hmm. Just, exactly, and he it was much more successful off. because of it. Yeah, I mean, it could work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But go on. I mean. Other than that, there's just all like the the past, like the other New Japan people and like other independent like Will Osprey would be great to see there, uh, like even you, like Omega obviously. You know who um, would be good? It's not a who. It's a group of people. Who the entire mid card divi- division with WWE. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. That's basically like, like if there yeah, was just like an accident, like <laughs> Zack Ryder of like Mick Carter's. Zack Ryder oh, yeah. should fucking go. The Ty Dillinger's Zach of the world Ryder and Ty Dillinger yeah. should go. They have been putting up with so much bullshit at WWE. They really should just go. Uh, and and not, not to too. mention that, not to mention they're friends with Cody Rhodes. So mm-hmm. yeah. well, that's why, what I'm like... hoping that AEW is going to be able to accomplish is to bring these kind of people. To the to the like the attention that they deserve and and the like the spotlight they, that they should be getting that they're not getting like in WWE. Yeah, kind of bring yeah. them to the foot to the forefront. Um, yeah, I think. I mean, the other guy I was thinking of was uh, Trevor Lee. Actually, I think he mm. would be a really good talent addition to that roster. Yeah, you know who else? Mojo Riley. Like basically, just also kind of piggybacking like the mid card. But uh, mm. Mojo mm-hmm. Riley would also be like I think Mojo Riley. Who's but... that? I I've heard of Mojo Rollins before. Yeah, but... me too. i <laughs> maybe that's his twin, his twin evil twin brother, or maybe it's a fusion between Mojo Riley and and uh, 
What's Alex Riley? Mr. Alex Riley? No, no. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, this guy. Dom, who is it from Undisputed Era? I always say O O Ky- O'Reilly or Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a fusion that I just like fuse them both together. Um, yeah, but like Dave, who would you wanna like really see? Oh, uh, Trevor Lee. Trevor, Trevor Lee. Lee is okay, so one guy. Would, yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. He's the guy I would like to see there. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so, like, who do you think? Would I actually, be, what? what? Oh no! I was just gonna say <laughs> another wrestler I would like to see is probably Mark Calloway. Yeah, Mark Calloway. Hardy, Hardy, uh, Hardy. Mm. You're so clever, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if he just wasn't a dead man already, you know? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, who do you think is going to, like, between Pac and Hangman, maybe even Janela, who do you think would become the first AEW champion if it was just between those three? Hangman. Whew, yeah, Hangman. I, I'd say Pac. On this one, honestly. I'll, I'll go against the grain. I think I think Pac could take the title. I mean, he's already won a title, another title outside. Like since he's came back, he's yeah. looking in better shape than he's ever looked before. He's no, got all no attitude to himself. Guy's ripped, jeez. He's looking real jacked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I would have to probably go with Hangman. Honestly, I mean, the thing with Pack is that yeah he has a championship already he definitely could win another don't get me wrong with that but the thing is that I think with with AEW is that maybe they want to put a belt on somebody that doesn't already have a title already mm. Mm. I mean I wouldn't be counting Jericho out either I mean I think Jericho could ah, be a, a, out, of, a like, out of nowhere <laughs> if, if, title, if yeah. Jericho if honestly if Jericho was to win that title I think he would just do it to like the sole intent of like putting over a younger, younger talent. But I mean, yeah. isn't that the whole sole purpose of Chris Jericho's career at this point? <laughs> well, yeah. Usually, when you get to his age, that's what you normally do: is you you do the job. Yep. But uh, I mean, I think some... just having Jericho take the title first, you can already set that title off as such a prestigious title that's by true. having someone by the likes of Jericho like holding it. That's it already true. brings that title up to a higher caliber than. I mean, the universal you, where it's starting. <laughs> yeah, they could do that. I mean, I mean, I think the baby face chasing the heel dynamic could work if it's a hangman. Say, for example, is chasing Jericho for the belt. I mean, it could work out. Yeah, but you think that maybe they, that they should put it on Jericho, maybe even Cody, uh, to give him some more of like a uh, like a specific caliber, like a higher caliber. In a sense. I I think that would be the best route to go. Personally. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, like, you know, WWE did with, you know, the Universal title, putting it, like, on Goldberg, putting it on Brock, well, and then Brock never gave it well, the fuck well, back. They put it on Finn <laughs> Balor. Jeez. And then it didn't. Yeah, they gave it to Finn. From Finn, it went to Seth, right? No, no, no. From Finn. Uh, who was it? It went to it was Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens it before Goldberg. I remember that. It was, F- yeah, but someone else had it before Kevin, Kevin Owens. Owens. No. No, it was Finn. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it was Kevin Owens. Oh right. yeah, yeah, I think it was yeah, I do Sarah. think that yeah, yeah. Kevin Owens had it uh, before. But and I actually just looked this up. So yeah, no, uh, the, that's correct. It was Finn Owens, Goldberg, Lesnar, Roman Reigns, Lesnar again. Again, they started mm-hmm. off with someone like Finn Balor, which yeah. I mean, isn't the the highest caliber of like I mean, they're always bragging Finn was the first person to hold it, but I mean. He had it for a day. But what though. did he do with it? Yeah. <laughs> Not even a day. He had it like for eight hours and then he relinquished it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but oh he did but here here uh here's the thing though, is that he actually went up against Seth Rollins for the title. I think that's what you're probably thinking about. But yeah, like he, he No, I I I forgot the thing was is that I forgot that Rollins had the title when it was like the main, main title. Like they weren't oh, okay. the universal yeah. title. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so maybe giving the title a little bit of prestige to start stuff off would actually not be a, such a bad idea uh, than before passing it on to somebody else. But I think we're going to have to wait and see because it seems like it's going to be potentially, not officially, but it seems like it's potentially going to be Pac going up against Hangman for the title. Uh, and then we have our next point here, which is, well, what does AEW have to do exactly to make themselves stand out from other wrestling promotions. What would you guys say? They don't have to do a damn thing. 
<laughs> like I'm, I'm being serious. I'm you being serious. Yeah, like, you they... should own that, not Khan. You should own that company. But um, no, nah, but but I'm being serious. They don't. I mean, you have look at the roster you have. Look at the guys that are throw that you know. Like look at how creative Cody is. Look how creative the young bucks are. What like they literally don't have to do. Like it's all eyes on them. They just got to make sure that they they produce and. They already dealt with that pressure once with all in, and look what they gave us. So I, I, assume, I don't think they need to do anything to stand out. I think they're in a good spot. I mean, what do they need to stand out in WWE's um, to get on their radar? Again, absolutely nothing because you know they're gonna they're gonna start picking up steam, and if they get. They get picked up. I think they got picked up by a network, right? Or they were they're still they're fishing like for networks. Yes, All right, so they get picked up, and you know, Dom, you know, you know, you guys know how it is. It's 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 all about ratings. Mm-hmm. And if they strategically put put uh put a show on a day like a Tuesday, mm-hmm. it's gonna get on WWE's radar, and mm-hmm. they're gonna realize. You know, everyone's like, "Oh, well, I'll watch wrestling on on Tuesday." Because realistically, coming from a television perspective, putting a show on a Friday night, especially between eight to eleven o'clock, means you are a stupid idiot. All right. But here's also the thing, too, and this got brought up in one of our previous episodes, or maybe just one of our talks. I I don't even remember anymore our episodes. <laughs> but um, uh, what I was gonna say though was, uh, it has actually been brought up before that when WWE wants to flush out competition. They try to schedule their shows on the same day as the competition of other shows. So, do you think that they are uh, like worried that WWE might? I mean, I know that they're moving to Fridays, but do you think that AEW might ever be afraid of WWE potentially moving back to Tuesday night? No, not at all. No, because look, look at look at Impact. Impact survived, and I was one of the few people that said, "Oh, they're gonna die. They're gonna die. They're gonna die." I remember they when Tom. When when I mean not top, when Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy left to the WWE, I looked at Dom and I said that's the nail in the coffin. When Jeremy <laughs> Jeremy Borash said, I looked at him and I said that is also the nail in the coffin. That's a big and loss. Here we are, here we are now, and they're still they're still on the network. Granted, it's a, a weird network, but well, you know, they haven't made still... that move yet. But <laughs> that that, no, that I think but... might be the final nail in the coffin. Honestly, mm. well, I don't know. I mean, I've been saying Which nail is, in the coffin. Is... There's how many people that my, my only complaint, like concern about that is that's a network that the majority of people don't have. What's the network called again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's like yeah, fight or fishing outdoors. I almost said progress, um, but then I was like, no, wait, that's a wrestling promotion. It, it, pursuit, <laughs> pursuit, that pursuit. was a pursuit. There we go. Yeah, I don't think I have that channel. <laughs> Which, yeah, I mean, I'm still gonna like. I'm gonna have to find it online somehow to watch it because I, I mean, I, I really do not want to give up on the program, honestly. Oh no! But I mean, it just makes it that much harder for me to keep up with the program when I can't just watch it on cable. Yeah, the convenience. I get you. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I just feel like with AEW, <laughs> um, they don't really have to do too much right now because. There's so many eyes on the promotion. There's so much hype behind the promotion. I think that right now they're going to be pretty safe, but they have to start delivering on the promises that they're making. Uh, I mean, right now it's too early to really tell, but I feel like they should be in a safe spot. Uh, I think that WWE, um, right now, they might not really be paying so much attention to them. Uh, and, no. I mean, like, to, to an extent, maybe. Uh, but I think that they're probably going to eventually... Uh, you know, depending on how uh, AEW grows, then they might actually see them as more of like a legit threat. But I think that right now they're just kind of like, okay, well, let's see how this pans out. Uh, I think that in order to just stand out from other wrestling promotions, though, I think that they just have to start kind of going um, a, diff- a different route, not just from WWE, but from other wrestling, uh, you know, like from uh, TNA, sorry, oh God, Impact, from New Japan. Uh, they have to start, really changing up the game but i think that going with a chinese promotion is one big thing like one big step because how many places have been going with chinese promotions uh wwe tried to go with 
China didn't pan mm-hmm. out with them so they, much. That didn't go anywhere. Yeah, it didn't work uh, anywhere. And it sucked yeah. too because they actually made John Cena learn Chinese. So uh, but, <laughs> you know, imagine that man. He's like, oh, God damn it. I had to learn Chinese for nothing. Uh, but, uh, well, I mean, at least now he acting. knows he could go to China and, and, and be good. So. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, I mean, hey, he picked it up. And, you know, I, I from what I heard, Cena is like a pretty big uh, fan, of, uh, fan of the Chinese too. Uh, but the other thing too is that you know, most places when they want to look for talent, they tend to go to Japan, but it seems that they're going to China, which is, you know, uh, re- really different. Like what Jericho said, this is, you know, how like they're doing stuff really differently. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that, you know, they just have to keep being unpredictable. That's the point is that they have to keep being unpredictable. They have to keep being different from other promotions. Yeah, just to add to that, um, I think Cody had said at the rally that um, wins and losses are actually going to count. They're going to mean something. Yeah. So that kind of makes famous. it really different, in my opinion. I think. I mean, that could change well, yeah, the game right there. That's literally how WWE really should um, compete with UFC. Mm, yeah. Because they say, I mean, they say, I mean, then again, UFC is the same thing. Wins and losses don't matter. But uh, <laughs> that's another story no. for another podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to an extent. But um, you know, if you if you you know, like, bring up stats, not like those stupid stats that Michael Cole does on Monday nights. Oh, did you know that Charlotte Flair p- picked her nose on uh, every Monday of the second week of uh, November, uh, <laughs> starting t- uh, January 2015? Like, no one cares how many pay-per-views she won in a row. Like, mm-hmm. just throw, throw out, like, hey, did you know that? I don't know. Like, not even random stats. Just be like, oh, damn, uh, this is his sixth loss. What is he going to do? Yeah. And, well, you know, like, boom, there you go. The, There's the only your person that, that they made a, a big deal about it is Kurt Hawkins, who's on his how many <laughs> lost no. streak right now. It's, 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 yeah, I know. gimmick right now is that it's whole a gimmick. thing. And it's, you know, it's embarrassing. But it works. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's embarrassing because the thing is, and we had this discussion back uh, in a previous podcast, being a jobber is kind of an unsung hero type of job. You're making other talent look good. So in a sense, you're always going to have work. Yeah, you may not get the title. You may not become a Hall of Famer, um, but you always have work and you always get money. Eh, to an extent. He's just not getting the amount of work he should be getting. <laughs> no, he's, he's not. But I'm saying that there is always work. You know, yeah. there there is always a person need, that needs to be put over. I mean, you know, Justin. They did make what? it look like he was finally going to like get a chance this past week on Raw when he was in. The top four of the Battle Royal. Yeah. Like, well, I don't that even know if that can... Put them over. They did that with I, I in they... The... they did some similar shit there with Slater and Rhino when they had him go up against uh, Jinder Mahal. And I thought that that was going to be a new feud. I thought that they were going to give a win to Slater. And then what the fuck did they do? They have him lose. And then I was really like, okay, no, this is the same old fucking shit as always. Because I, <laughs> yeah. actually, well, thought, that's why... I actually thought that Slater was going to be like the most improved superstar um, back in 2018, I was thinking that maybe they'll finally be giving him a push, but no, it was one of those false things that just came nah. out of nowhere. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that was really I want to say, yeah, I mean, they, they have a knack for like, you know, making it look like you're going to push a, they're going to push a superstar, then you get excited, and then they don't push him, and then you're upset. And like, that's just literally rinse, wash, repeat. Yeah, pretty yep. much you know? in a way. Um, but yeah, though, like moving on here, uh, Dom, what back, do you think? Back that they to need? AW. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, but Dom, Let's what do you think that they need to do? More spotlight than they than they need right now. <laughs> yeah. What What were you asking, Dan? I was saying, uh, what does AEW need to do to make themselves stand out more? I mean, I think it's just how they're like, they, like Moses said, they they do have all the eyes on them. I think they just need to to follow through with everything. They need to to let people see that it's not just another promotion that's coming and saying, oh, we're going to give people a chance. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. They just need to actually follow through on their promises of of giving the fans what they want and making it a, a an experience for, for people that are trying to, to get into something new other than like the same old shit that we've had before. Yep. No, I definitely uh, agree with that. It's just that they have to really just stick to their promises and essentially. Uh, how do you think that the 
women's division division is going to stack up because I know that Brandy said that she wanted it to be <laughs> perhaps the strongest in the world. Uh, Britt Baker, I know, is a big star, a uh, pretty big star, and signing her really got a lot of people's attention to the uh, women's division. Um, so, like, how do you think that they are going to structure it? Do you think that it's going to perhaps be like the uh, next big, uh, you know, like the, perhaps like the most strongest women's division out there, like as what they're saying? Uh, how would they need to accomplish that exactly? I guess I'll go. Uh, if no one's gonna talk, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I was. Just I thought he names. said dumb. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dumb. I kind of zoned it. I zoned out on that one. I was oh, him. See who I, come up first, but <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. That's why I was fishing to see if anyone's going to speak. Oh, I'll take it. All right. Um, I think. I think they just need to to play this the right way. I mean, they said that they want. They're, they're going to give equal pay for the women. They're going to. They're going to make sure the women are on par with the men and equal with the men. And I think they need to do that. I think like they need to they need to keep it in the way, like unlike the WWE who who try and like show you, hey, look, we're doing this for the women. Hey, hey, look, we're doing that for the women. They need to just do it instead of telling you how much they're doing it. I mean, if they if they were to just throw in a woman's main event right away, that's a great like way to to prove things. And I mean, they they just need to promote the women's like the women's no differently than than the men. It's I mean, kind of, yeah, they have yeah. a lot of a lot of great like there's a lot of great unsigned fe- uh, female wrestlers out there right now that they they can take advantage of. So honestly, I mean, I think the ball is in their court as to like what they can do with it. It's kind of similar to like how I see the UFC as well as some other wrestling promotions promote women's matches. Uh, WWE they make a huge spectacle out of a lot of stuff, while a lot of these other promotions, including you know Ultimate Fighting Championship and you know MMA promotions, they just have women's fights or women's wrestling. They don't be like, oh look what we're doing, isn't this cool? Uh, they just do it, and it just kind of in a way makes it seem more uh, legitimate uh, o- overall from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's really like how I kind of, um, you know, th- that's like basically my two cents is, is I have to agree with you on that. It's just don't overhype, uh, the women's matches, just make it, uh, that they're just any other competitor and don't make it seem like it's such like a big groundbreaking thing. Um, yeah, yeah like Dave, like you, um, you basically on board with that too. Yeah, I think they need to keep it on a level playing field as the men are and not tend to, you know, blow things up or blow it up as much as it needs to be because, I mean, we're already in a women's evolution right now. So, I mean, they they already have a an advantage going into this thing. So, I mean, it's just a matter of which talent they're going to grab and how they're going to follow up the storylines and the, the wrestling and all that thing. So, I mean, we'll see how it goes. Yep, exactly. Moses, what do you think? I'm on board. Yeah, okay, there we go. We're on board. board. All right, so we we have touched upon this point here a couple of times. Just want to go over um, really fast. But, yeah, working with OEW, OEW Oriental um, Entertainment Wrestling, I think that they're called. Uh, First Chinese promotion I've ever really heard of. Um, Also, the first one that seems to be in a cross collaboration with uh, not just AEW, but I think the first ever Western organization. A wrestling promotion. So um, mm-hmm. I'm really kind of curious here. Is do you think that this might actually give uh, a lot more lever, um, a lot more leverage to a lot of other potential Chinese promotions to start uh, vamping up their game, getting uh, bigger, perhaps, um, and then possibly even uh, just seeing like this more of a um, of a growth of China uh, of a Chinese rest of Chinese pro wrestling, uh, because as you know, I think pretty much uh, the the Japanese have been like kind of more dominant in the in the pro wrestling in Asia uh, uh, market, in a sense. Like, whenever people go for uh, pro wrestling talent in Asia, they always go to Japan. But do you think well, yeah, because... Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, but no, like, I think uh, like, what you're going to say is that because some, a lot of, like, the best wrestlers in the world have actually come from Japan, and from our previous interview with Aisha Raymond, is also their dedication. But do you think that uh, this... You know, this partnership here could actually possibly give a lot of light to uh, to China, and then maybe we might even see, you know, a while down the road here. But do you think that we might actually see an explosion of Chinese pro wrestling and talent coming from there? 
I see a, a potential. I mean, like I was going to say, um, you know, the the thing is with, with Japan is that, you know, his, from a historical standpoint, um, you know, a lot of wrestlers, um, especially a lot of legendary wrestlers, found their way either in Mexico or um, or Japan. You know, you go to, you know, you, 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 you look up things about Chris Jericho. He started out Japan. Dean Malenko started out in Japan. A lot of, like, you know, really good wrestlers uh, and legendary wrestlers got their start in Japan. So, you know, that's why it's been kind of like um, essentially a cash cow for, you know, wrestling talent because, you know, these people are, uh, these people are, you know, uh, you know the the Japanese. Um, well, when I mean these people, I mean like the bookers. They see, you know, they they want the best of the best, and you know, for a long time, the best of the best either came from Mexico or Japan because of the storied past, and you know, just like you said, the dedication of you know uh, how much they they really. I mean, like I talked about this uh, to people, you know, outside of um, you know this podcast. When I was, you know, when I was going back into the ring, I was saying, I'm, you know, I want to be in America and then eventually make my way to either Mexico or Japan. But, uh, you know, I, I think we'll see an influx of, uh, you know, Chinese wrestlers, but I don't think we're going to hit that, like, you know, that golden age of, you know, kind of like what WCW did with the Cruiserweights where you just saw nonstop, you know, lucha, you know, luchadors, you know, from Mexico. Uh, I think it's more or less going to be like a few Chinese wrestlers here and there. And then over time, you know, you'll see more kind of, you know, uh, get onto either AEW or WWE or, you know, um, you know, some major name uh, brands. I see. So it's pretty much like the legacy of Japanese wrestling that people just always go back to. It's essentially just that there have been so many really top name wrestlers have come out of Japan and they also have such a history of Japanese professional wrestling there that that's what, that's basically what cements pro wrestling in Japan, why it's such a hot spot for it. Uh, so that's like basically like one of their strengths. Um, Dom, what do you think? Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, they, tr they've tried tapping it like uh, last year, I think it was the last year, two years ago, WWE signed all those people from China to NXT trying to tap into the Chinese market and it just didn't go anywhere. And I think this is going to be like, I guess give it a second chance to try and see if they're like, I mean, I don't know anything about these guys personally, but like I said before, the description that he gave of these, of this group of wrestlers really intrigued me. And I'm really excited to see like what they have to offer. And I think like, I mean, we don't know if this is the only group that they have there or if, if, there's a whole like line of people like waiting to do stuff over there, so I think it's going to be interesting to see how they do over here and how they're how they're taken. And I I do think that it's potentially going to like bring in like the the market that they were trying to bring in originally. Yeah, I do know that there are still a couple of I think Chinese wrestlers that are currently in the development in the WWE Performance Center. And I do think that there's a couple on NXT right now. Sha Li is, I think, perhaps like the only oh, Chinese woman wrestler. I don't know if she's so active, though, on NXT because I don't really watch so much NXT. I could if I could. Um, I would if I could. <laughs> but um, um, the, the I do think that she is um, on NXT currently. Uh, they I've seen some of these other uh, Chinese wrestlers, their profiles on Twitter, but i never seen – anything from them but apparently they do have some people that i think that they're in the performance center right now and they might be going to nxt uh and then there was an other chinese uh woman wrestler uh, zeta jang and she wrestled uh in the may young classic but uh not too much as i, I she she actually was going to be going to nxt i think but she uh she didn't uh stay there too long and she uh she pieced out but she was actually in oew and I actually saw her doing some matches at OEW. Uh, so I think that there might actually be a couple of familiar faces from uh, the WWE from, you know, maybe like the Mae Young Classics and um, other tournaments that they might have in the future that you might actually notice from OEW. 
Um, but yeah, I actually did look into some uh, a little bit of OEW. It, it's definitely some interesting people on there. Uh, but it's definitely something that you should check out. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, Davey, what do you think? Uh, I think um, there's a lot of um, untapped potential here. I mean, if they do partner up with these uh, Chinese uh, wrestling promotions, um, I mean, a lot of wrestlers have come from you know these promotions. You know, whether it's uh, coming from, you know, going into WWE or going into Impact or whatever the case may be. I mean, I think they could garner a lot of young stars if they find the right market for it and find the right talent. So I think it, it works in their favor and I think it sh it'll work out for them in the end. So, Yep, I definitely am interested to see not just how OEW is going to go, but potentially the um, a future of the Chinese pro wrestling uh, promotions. All right, so time for one of my favorite topics here, and that's Wrestle Kingdom. So I actually woke up, believe it or not, 4 a.m. to watch this shit. <laughs> woke up at 4 a.m. to watch this shit because Nerd. I'm, I'm such a weeb, uh, as Dom would probably call me. I'm such like a weeb for like Japanese pro wrestling and just Japanese things I mean, in general. So, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I woke up at 4 a.m. to watch this, and I uh, – uh, I have to say, like, I, I popped in, like, I think actually in the middle of it. I thought it was going to be starting at 4 a.m. This thing actually started at, like, 2 a.m. in the morning. So I was like, oh, God damn it. And I, I tuned in, <laughs> but um, I came in during the uh, the tag team match with the young uh, – the three-way tag match with the Young Bucks, uh, Bullet Club, and um, – uh, sorry, it was – yeah, yeah, the Young Bucks, um, Bullet Club, and also – the uh, evil and yeah, Sonata. Evil and, uh, Sonata. I don't know if they actually have like a. No, they don't have like a like a tag name, but it's just like uh, evil and Sonata. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I came in during that match, and then I got to see it from then on out. But I have to say that uh, from what I saw, and then also with the Osprey versus Ibushi match, that uh, the the night was amazing. Uh, I thought that it was a really great um, a really great uh, show. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to get into a little bit of uh, what I thought was the match of the night. Uh, and if I could pick one, I have to go with uh, just because I really just like went batshit insane when he came out. But it was Okada versus Jay Lethal. Uh, sorry, oh, my God. No, Jay, <laughs> Jay Lethal. No, <laughs> Jay. Wow. <laughs> Moses, you got, wow. me, you got me thinking about Jay Lethal. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what what wrestling wow. kingdom were you watching? I, I don't <laughs> know. I think he's watching. Uh... watching. <laughs> I was oh watching my God. Uh, Features ROH. Yeah, um, I don't know, it, was like, <laughs> it was like the final final Wrestle Kingdom battle. That was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I uh, have to say that seeing uh, Jay White uh, just continuously like beat Okada into the ground, uh, basically just like kind of tearing him uh, apart, like emotionally and also physically. Uh, seeing this match here where Okada actually has to go back to his old gimmick was actually pretty uh, interesting. Although Okada lost. Uh, I thought it was a um, a pretty good step, like in the right direction, because they were actually trying to give him this different persona here, where instead of having blonde hair, he had like red hair. He kind of looked like ice cream with like a cherry on top, or he had like I don't know, like cherry uh, syrup on his head. And um, he also like walked around with these balloons. He didn't really have like the rainmaker gimmick anymore, and people didn't really care for that. Uh, but at wrestle at just this uh, pr uh, past Wrestle Kingdom, he actually came back. He brought back the uh, he brought back the Rainmaker gimmick, and as soon as he did, people were like going crazy. I was just like, "Oh my god, he brought back the Rainmaker!" Ah! <laughs> and they actually had like all like the you know like the paper money like falling from the uh, falling from mm -hmm. the ceiling, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and then like but the part that got everybody going was when he took off his pants. And you saw those short shorts, and everybody was like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" And uh, yeah, that was um, yeah, that was yeah, <laughs> that was uh, yeah, it was yeah. People were people were losing their shit. Uh, so uh, the the match was actually pretty good because you got to see Okada just kind of busting out like a, some more of his uh, more classic moves and stuff. Um, I think that Lethal. Uh, oh my god, I did it fucking again. White <laughs> uh, actually had a um, actually had like a just needed the win here at Wrestle Kingdom uh, because Jay White has actually been kind of like over now and he's like the leader of the Bullet Club and he's just like pretty much like a big name in wrestling right now and it's possibly very soon that I think he's probably going to be getting a. Uh, a pretty big, um, a big like IWGP title shot, maybe against Tanahashi or maybe against Naito. Um, but I think for right now, they just needed him to beat Okada at Wrestle Kingdom 
to kind of like put him over, you know, big win at uh, at Wrestle Kingdom. So then, uh, so then he can possibly lead up into um, a big um, a title match with uh, Tanahashi or uh, Tanahashi or Naito. Um, and just p- previously, New Year's Dash, it actually seemed that he uh, that that might actually spur a new feud uh, mm-hmm. with the Bullet Club and also with Naito. Uh, sorry, with uh, Tanahashi and Okada. And yeah. this pot now um I actually was talking to my buddy Wilfred, uh, who runs the Wilfred Watches podcast, and he actually said to me that he thinks that it might actually be Okada getting a title shot against Tanahashi. Now I don't know if that's true because it seemed that I don't know if this is really gonna happen because I think that's more of uh Jay White's time here. But yeah. I think that uh possibly if they really are intent on giving Okada back his Rainmaker gimmick and possibly maybe trying to build him up again uh, then I mean it's a it's a possibility anything can really happen but I think that it's Switchblade's time so and I think that they possibly want to put a title around his waist if not the heavyweight title maybe the uh, the uh, intercontinental uh, title but um, yeah so what would you guys say was your match of the night here? Well, my match of the night was uh, <laughs> Jericho and Tetsuya Naito. I mean, this match started off <laughs> as you'd expect. I mean, all I mean, Naito barely gets to the ring, he gets attacked, and then you get the whole uh, kendo stick deal. And there was one spot in the match where Jericho just DDT'd the hell out of Naito, and it looked really oh, bad. That, oh my god! Was, yeah, that how the hell? How, how I, I don't know. Dumb this, but like, I can't understand the concept of this. But he got his head. He he got DDT so hard that it, the table didn't break, mm-hmm. but his head went through the table anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they say so he left a hole in the table. Yeah, yeah that's gotta <laughs> fucking hurt. Seriously, a hole in the table, but but yeah, that go through it. Like, yeah, that was yeah, fucking brutal. Yeah, that spot was insane. Yeah, and then you had the whole. Uh, you see the welts that Jericho had in this this guy's uh, on his uh, ribs there. Oh, that oh yeah, big like, yeah. uh, yeah. like it was like God. like a one big like red streak like on his chest from the candle. Yeah, oh yeah. my yeah. God, on his Instagram or whatever it was, and yeah, that looked like it freaking hurt. Oh, it looked nasty. <laughs> yeah, this match was everything you'd expect. I mean, this <laughs> it was brutal, it was violent, but I just feel like last year's Wrestle Kingdom. I feel like Naito should be the guy at this point, but. I don't know. That's just me. I, I think he'll get there, but I I feel he should have beaten Okada last year, in my opinion. But, but overall, this match was really, really good, really violent. violent. I, I agree. That was also my pick for match of the night as well. I mean, I mean, we're one week into the, the new year already, and I, that's already a nominee for me for match of the year. Mm-hmm. Like that match was like just insane. That DDT on the table is insane. That's the the whole energy that both of these guys put off in that match was was a hundred percent. They both when I I mean Jericho always gives the best he can. Naito, the, I mean he gave a great performance. Also, fuck Naito for for what he did. <laughs> Seriously, there. I, I don't even I mean, want to. Moses Moses agrees with me. That we had the same issue again when when he hit Jericho with the title and just fucking chucked that thing across the arena. Like, come on, dude. That's... Seriously, man. Yeah. Those professional guys. <laughs> no, no, that is professional. <laughs> he should be, pro- no, he should yeah, be professional like... with his title. That... Well, like, well Naito's dude... demeanor, he's he, that's how he is when he put titles. Yeah, he just but still, around. that's disrespectful to the belt. You don't disrespect the belt, no matter what, if that's your gimmick or not. That's like yeah. one of the the first things like, they teach you in wrestling yeah, school. It's understandable. Mm-hmm. All right, you can hit someone with the belt, yes, yeah. but. Just fucking chucking it the way he did after he hit it. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, people were fighting for that title to fucking earn it, and yeah. he just treated it like it's fucking like yeah. a like a it's like a toy. Yeah, toy, yeah. yeah um, exactly. Yeah. Like there mm-hmm. were two things I noticed right after that match ended. It was one he just like randomly attacks. I mean, like everybody does it, but like he just like randomly attacked the referee like out of nowhere. And then after that, then he just, like, kind of took the belt and just, like, chucked it around. And then I was like, okay, I don't know why people were cheering for this guy. He seems like a heel. <laughs> <laughs> it was like heel versus heel match. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, regardless, though, I have to say that, that was, um, like, for me anywhere, anyway, I was, like, maybe, like, my uh, 
Um, also, like, a top favorite of mine, too. I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I can just go on and on because, like, a bunch of the matches I liked. But most of the other, started, the, Yeah, sorry, go on. Well, no. I mean, we can give Moses his, his time to talk, too. Well, well yeah. I, the Osprey match, also. Um, honestly, I was just going to say that my match in there was the same as you guys. I wasn't really, like, crazy about, uh, like, Wrestle Kingdom was good, but I just feel like last year's was better. You know, there were mm-hmm. a few matches that I watched. Uh, Omega's, Cody's, uh, with uh, Flip Gordon. Um, I like those, but honestly, it's just Naito versus Jericho were, was my uh, was my thing. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, a lot of people uh, were absolutely uh, just absolutely loved Naito versus Jericho. Um, I have to also say that I really did like. Osprey versus Ibushi, especially yeah. when Ibushi almost looked like he got freaking knocked out. That that match yeah. started off a little bit slow, and then as it went on, like they really got into it. And by the end of the match, they like looked like they were just trying to kill each other. Yeah, <laughs> like some of those freaking shots that they were landing on each other was like rough. Oh yeah, I heard like that. Yeah, that I heard. Uh, what's his name? Ibushi. Yeah, Ibushi. Yeah, uh, who am I thinking? Ishi. They said he had a concussion apparently after the match. Oh, I don't know if that's see, true or not. Zach Saber, right? Yeah, Zach Saber, yeah. Dude, that guy, like, I'm surprised that she actually has, like, a concussion because he takes so many shots to the head. He looks like he's he's just, like, you know, his his exact uh, nickname. He's the Stone Pitbull. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nothing hurt my bones, you know? <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, I, um, I, I'm surprised, though, but uh, I, I uh, f- felt like, you know, you know that that shit's gonna you know freaking happen, but uh, mm-hmm. I mean, hopefully he recovers from that shit though. I mean that's uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Serious stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I also, mean, I mean, I will be honest with you. I did really like uh, Omega versus Tanahashi. I mm-hmm. thought that it wasn't like you know a real uh, like a real climactic match. Like it, you know, it had like its moments there, like when Tanahashi hit the uh, like flying ace or whatever his finisher is, uh, and he. Uh, uh, you know, like and Omega picked out, uh, kicked out, and then you know he had hit it again, and then finally he got it, uh, and then also like when he missed, um, uh, missed his, uh, you know, missed the flying ace, and then actually flew right through the table. Uh, yeah, that was you know pretty cool. Uh, but I mean, I think that most people just kind of knew that this was Omega's final match in a sense because it was rumored, and also just like with his entrance because his entrance was actually really fucking sick. It was really like good. Undertale, like he had like that little like Undertale kind of graphics, um, uh, uh, like intro, um, I- intro like on his uh, on the Titanthon, uh, on the Titantron, and uh, mm. it, it was I, when I saw that I was just like, oh my god, this is so like kind of heartbreaking at the same time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and, like when he walked out with the, uh, I mean, he swear I swear a guy, he looked like, kind of like like Seth Roth or something with uh <laughs> with his, uh, I mean, like, you know, as part of his uh his nickname oh. there. Uh, the one I was telling, there. I was telling Dom that he kind of looked like uh, Siegfried from uh, Soul from Soul Blade, which uh, was a old PlayStation game back, back, back in the day. In the day, guys. In the day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what would been really funny though? Imagine if he actually picked up that like uh, the little plastic sword that he had and just like hit um, Tanahashi with it, <laughs> or if he just like took it and like just started like trying to like stab him with, it, chase them around. Like, die, you die. <laughs> I oh my god. You. <laughs> oh god. You know. Um. Yeah, but his entrance was insane. I loved it. Um. But with uh. With, with uh Kushi um with a uh, Kushida right and uh Kenny Kushida versus Ishimori. Oh Ishimori. yeah, actually before we uh, before we get into this next part here, uh Kushida versus Ishimori, um Dom, you were freaked out by Kushida's entrance, weren't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was pretty pretty damn awesome. <laughs> that I told you you were gonna love it too. I was like wait until you get to Kushida versus Ishimori because you're going to see perhaps like one of the best entrances i've ever seen in my life yet also kind of creepy because when that, you that see mask the... was fucking scary i mean that was one of the most realistic masks i've ever seen I don't, <laughs> I, see this is my question that i want to write to new japan i want to be like how much did that cost and how much time did it take and how long did kushida have to sit there or i don't know if he just got like a like a model of his face uh, you know like a photo of his face or whatever but um if if you actually need him to like sit there while you model it after his face or something um mm-hmm. like how long did that take <laughs> you know? yeah uh, because it seemed like there was just way too much time and effort for that shit <laughs> uh yeah. but 
the match too with uh, Kushida versus Ishimori I mean, was, uh, was Ishimori awesome. has always been very impressive to me. I mean, I, I've you know, seen him from Impact like before he went into to New Japan, and that's how I knew him. And I've always been impressed by him. And like even here in New Japan, he just put on a great performance. I mean, I wish they would have gave him a little bit more time to work in that match. Personally, but, yeah, I mean, it was still a great, great performance from both of them. Now, here's the other thing too: is when I saw Juice Robinson taking on Cody, I also felt like that match was a little bit short. Uh, I felt like it could have gone much longer. It felt like Brandy's interference just wasn't like <laughs> so natural in a sense. It kind of felt like it was a bit rushed too. Um, because I just kind of noticed that it was just like, oh, she just like kind of ran in there a couple of times to, to you know, to to protect uh, to protect Cody, and there mm -hmm. just wasn't so much, um, like like there wasn't just so much of um <clears throat> like back and forth there going on between Cody and and Juice. I felt like because Brandy was breaking up a little bit too much in a sense, but then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. like when she actually got ejected from ringside, then all of a sudden, uh, then like the action picked up, and I felt like it ended too quickly in a sense. Yeah, I, I agree. That match, they should have extended it a little bit longer, like especially being like for the title and all that stuff. Yeah, they, yeah, they just... I th yeah, I think um, I think what I've heard was that Cody did come in that match with a bad knee, so that could be why it was cut short. Gotcha. I mean, that, that could. I'm be not gonna curious. not gonna get mad at them for that, and if that's the, if that's the actual case. Mm. So, how'd you guys like the uh, possibly the last tag team match that the Young Bucks were going to be involved in? In in New Japan, <laughs> um, I I think we'll, we'll we'll probably see more of them in the uh, AEW. But uh, the match was match was decent. I mean, I didn't hate the match. To me, to me I want to point out like Sonata really stole that match for me. Like, I yeah, think he was doing a lot of crazy stuff that I like very very innovative stuff and very like a lot of cool shit that I haven't seen. He really like that's someone like I wasn't too familiar with before like. I know of Sonata and Evil from a few other like stuff, but this really like put him on my radar as someone to, to keep following in the future. And I'm excited to see like what else he has to do like after this. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, Sonata he he's shown shades of um being a good singles wrestler. Even like last year, he's they he had a few big matches with people. So I think oh, once yeah, he gets out of yeah, once he gets out of the tag team realm, he'll definitely I, I would be love a star. To see, see them push that a little bit more, hopefully. Yeah. Because I think yeah. he's like, some great potential. The um, other thing, too, about Sonata is I, I you know, I've seen him uh, go with Evil, um, and they really go like pretty, like pretty well hand in hand. And I just like kind of like love like their synergy together in the ring. Uh, my prediction is because like now like they won the World Tag League, and on top of that, they also are the new tag team champions in in New Japan. I think that potentially they're going to give them a run with the titles for a little bit, and then maybe have a feud between them before they actually go into a more of a much more of a singles push for Sonata. But I think he's possibly going to be getting one much later this year. But I feel like they're going to just try to. Give him a couple of runs with the tag team, uh, with the tag team division before they actually have him step up and actually go into the singles realm. Because I think, like you know, evil, evil uh, can stand on his own feet. They're just kind of doing this right now, I think, to kind of push Sonata and get him a little bit more attention with somebody like, kind of backing him up. And then possibly they're going to have him and Evil maybe square off a bit in a feud um, sort of mm -hmm. thing before they actually start giving him more of a push. That's like my prediction in a sense with that. Yeah, I think even Evil faced uh, Jericho this past year for the belt for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Yep. So yep, that's he's right. had he's had a push as well. So I mean, I think Sonata will definitely get his time um, once that comes around. So we'll see. Yeah. So um, going on here about uh, Kushida and Kenny, they left New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, so. You know, there's a lot of rumors going around here about Kenny. There's, like, a lot more that really needs to be thrown around here. Perhaps the most I've ever, like, one of the most I've ever seen so far. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, people actually arguing, should he go to AEW or should he stay in WWE? Well, and then we have people I mean, literally just cursing each other out the entire time. I think, and all, like, if we're going to be real here, Kenny is the hottest free agent, like, at the moment and possibly, like, in a long, long time. 
Here's I my mean, here's one question I have for you, just really fast. Do you think he's actually higher than Cody Rhodes was? Yes. Yes. Mm, right. Yeah. It, it it's tough to tell as well. I mean, because Kenny has been doing this like outside of W W for so long, like it's hard to generate how much, how much, how high is he was on the radar compared to Cody. But I mean. Like right now, every like if you're like talking wrestling, Kenny Omega is one of the first names that gets thrown out to to anyone. Yeah, totally. It, it, he's he was on like the cover of Rolling Stone magazine in Japan. The guy's huge, and the fact that he's not wrestling underneath a specific brand right now is I mean, also really odd. The yeah. ball the ball is all in his court right now. I mean, he can choose to go to WWE where he's going to be making a shitload of money, but he's not going to be. I really don't think they would give him the freedom that he should, that he's getting it, like, like, be getting. Mm-hmm. Or does he go to someone like AEW where he can work freely and not make as much money, but he'll still be able to enjoy what he's doing and get the most out of what he's like. Yeah, definitely. It's like, do you sacrifice your time for money or not? You know, of what he's looking for, looking to get out of wherever he's working. Yes. Yep. Definitely. Um, you know, it, it Kenny has so much power in this position <laughs> right now. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. he literally has so much power to do whatever he wants. Uh, Moses, like, what do you think the future of uh, New Japan is going to be like, though, with uh, Kushida and Kenny's uh, Kenny being gone? Um, to be honest with you, I think that uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna take a massive hit, but I think that they've got a knack of um having having talent to you know um not essentially replace other talent but you know you know what i mean like they they People don't that have to step up and rise up to exactly the like they have exactly. Jay White right now who is making a huge splash yes. making his way up That's exactly like if the wrestle kingdom a year ago i had no idea who jay white was and now all of a sudden i'm like oh man like jay white's on the card i gotta watch this Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I think they're going to struggle a little bit, but I honestly think they're going to recover from it because they've been around for a mm-hmm. long time and they'll they, still be around. Then now and to add on to that, <laughs> they've, they've been adopting, like, with all their losses, they lost AJ Styles, they lost Finn Bauer, they lost Shinsuke. all these people. Shinsuke, yep. keep, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, look at the Shinsuke. talent that they've lost, and no matter what, they were always able to like almost re- like rejuvenate their division and always come up with more talent. So I think if New Japan has a strength here, it's not like what WWE does, like where, oh, if if the talent is not performing well, they just kind of have them like dwindle in the mid car, not do anything with them. Like I think that New Japan really tries to find people's strengths and then they try to cap build up on their strengths and then potentially try to make them into like the face of the company, the next faces mm-hmm. of the company. So. You know, like you have, like what Dom said here, you have Switchblade Jay White, who's re- becoming really big. You almost have like the entire Bullet Club, uh, like coming back together. Uh, you know, you have the Gorillas of Destiny here, Tama uh, Tana Longa and Tama Tonga. You have uh, Bad Luck Fale. You have, um, you know, you have like the the new Bullet Club in a sense here. Uh, you also have uh, like Taiji Ishimori. You also have. Uh, Tanahashi, like they're not low on and talent. Like, we <laughs> like just say, honestly, yeah. they're not low <laughs> on talent wanting, here. But you know, with Kenny, they want Don, to bring Sonata up and Evil into their singles stuff. Yeah, they're already like a way to push things. Up. Yeah, they're definitely. never gonna run out of talent if if is what we're trying to say. Yeah, and I think I think Naito should be the guy. So I think he should be the next guy. Honestly, if, if they're moving away from Okada, they should make Naito the next guy, in my opinion. But. It could be. I mean, yeah. it definitely could be. Uh, since now that he's the uh, intercontinental cha- uh, intercontinental champion, I mm-hmm. think that he very well could, you know, continue moving up there. But yeah. um, I really just, you know, think that you know it's going to be a temporary hit with them uh, right now. But uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to phase them though, because uh, they they have guys ready to you know to take the spotlight and you know take over the spotlight in a sense. Uh, but the uh, other thing here too is that. You know, if Kenny does go to a- um, AEW, he, I think that they're probably going to give him. It seems like they're pretty uh, would be pretty liberal with the ability to move between promotions. And, yeah, I think I think this shows. isn't like anyone that goes from from New Japan to AEW. It's not going to be the last that we see of them in New Japan. Like I think there's going to be a lot of 
They'll like probably work together. Between those two companies. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I think you know, a, a New Japan Pro Wrestling, like they already do quite a bit of work with British talent. I don't think that they would have a problem working with AEW. I think that you know, with yeah. the Bucks there and Cody, like you know, some of their Golden Boys there and Jericho, uh, they would definitely, I think, be open to working with them. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think, I, I mean, yeah, there could potentially be like a partnership between the two of them down the road, some somewhere, where AEW guys on New Japan and New Japan guys on AEW. And cross promotional shows and stuff like that. I wouldn't be like too shocked if we if we see those. But you also gotta think about Ring of Honor too, because Ring of Honor has done a lot of collaborations with New Japan. So I mean, yeah, I think I, mean, that's it... also... Cause I, I think, think that's also a, pot- a potential too. Like I mean, mm-hmm. New Japan is working with with Ring of Honor right now. Right. So I mean, I think that's another collaboration that's potentially possible with with AEW as well. Hmm. Do you think there could be like a three way collaboration deal here? Uh, I think, yeah, I, I think so, depending, out. yeah. I think there could be a collaboration big. with as many freaking companies they want to collaborate with. I mean, it really has <laughs> yeah. almost seemed that way uh, with a yeah. lot of the, uh, not, not so like, you know, we call New Japan and uh, Impact Wrestling the indies, quote unquote, but it's mm-hmm. not really the indies. They're still bigger promotions, but I think what we're trying to say here is, and I actually kind of give it its own like category, I just kind of call them not, non wwe promotions just because <laughs> wwe and nxt are just like you know e- enormous but you also have new japan uh impact and ring of honor who i would uh, and also i don't know about lucha underground but i guess we can throw them in there but i just kind of call them the non wwe promotions and then we have like the really small companies uh like the one that we work with a little bit wrestlegate pro and um like bar wrestling which are like you know just like really small indie promotions that you might see talent coming to and then like you know like for a night and then they're gone uh those are more of the indies but i think that you know with the indies you have like this whole buffet that you can choose from you could work with all this different talent and you know yeah. it really benefits uh, that's, the the thing. Yep. that's the thing like with all those like roh and and new japan and impact wrestling they're not afraid to to use talent from other companies and let their talent go other places. Like mm-hmm. WWE, they they have lock on their talent and they won't let them. Like they they're a little bit lenient with Evolve now. They they might let like someone from an X T go to an Evolve show. Yeah. Because that's like their major market right now. That's a feeding but system, that, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in WWE, you're locked in there, and you you're not allowed to do anything else. And that kind of like kind of hurts their wrestlers in a, in a way. Yeah, exactly. As in, it's... like, Impact, they they're free to go to as many as as many independent shows and smaller shows that they want to do, and they can work at their own schedule. Isn't Impact um collaborating with Noah? I believe. Uh, actually, yeah. oh shit! Actually, Dave, you bring up an interesting point right there. Actually, uh-huh. I heard WWE was doing some sort of collaboration with Noah. That worked. I'm actually gonna look that up right now, but uh. Believe it or not, I actually heard that Noah and WWE were actually doing some sort of relationship, and this was actually oh yeah, mm-hmm. WWE reportedly has new working relationship with Noah. Uh, this was actually posted up back in uh, June last year. That's interesting. Hmm. Very ah. very interesting. Uh, but maybe also but- they have something going on here with. With impact, I mean, you know, they are technically a more, you know, although like, they're one of like the biggest wrestling promotions in Japan, they are still, um, you know, not he- enormous. Well, they were also like doing work with like they, they, they had they were, uh, airing so, like promotional shows with each other too. Like mm-hmm. they would have their talent on one of their shows and they would broadcast it. And yeah, like uh, what's his name? Um, Eli Drake was in uh, Mexico, I think, fighting uh, AAA, I think it was. was it? Some promotion down there in Mexico, I think yeah. it was. He was fighting somebody down there. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah. They're, they're, they're not shy of doing inter- interpromotional stuff there, mm-hmm. which is always good to see. All righty. So we have to move along to our final point here of the night. But who oh. do you think is going to be leaving New Japan next. Uh, there has been some rumors that Okada might actually le- leave 
and possibly the Tokyo Godfather Takahashi, not Tanahashi. I also mixed them up, uh, but Takahashi, <laughs> as well as also quite a few other Japanese wrestlers. Uh, their names I don't really remember right now, but uh, quite a few of them might actually be leaving. Um, so, like, do you guys think that they might be going the Kenny and Kushida route? Hmm, that's a good question. Mizokata, I think, uh, from it's, what I it's... heard, WWE has huge uh, interest in him. But what I'm also scared of is, will they turn him into another Shinsuke? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly don't want that, honestly. Okay, and another thing here is, you know, Okada has his own cruise line. I don't know if you guys knew that, but the man actually has his own cruise line, just like Jericho does, and he has it, like, in Japan. But he has his, like, in, in Kobe, Japan. And it's, um, you know, if they were to make a joke out of him in WWE, like, I, I think that that's just, like, you know, like like not going to do well for his image at all uh, for a man that yeah. has like a business like that. Uh, I don't think yeah. that he's going to go with WWE, but uh, I think possibly, I mean, there's always AEW. I think that Okada actually went to uh, all in uh, when, what the young bucks and uh, uh, Cody put on. So, um, you know, when that was with other different uh, indie wrestlers as well. So mm -hmm. it's possible that maybe he might even have some sort of working thing here with mm -hmm. AEW. From what I heard, Okada's actually really good friends with the Young Bucks, too. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we could definitely see... Uh, I mean, he could end up... He could stay with New Japan. He could also just, you know, sign with AEW. I mean, the ball's in his court at this point. So, I mean, I, I can't say that way going to go, in but... Short shorts, thank you very much. Oh, yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think that he's another guy that has a lot of power. Um, I mean, from what it seems like, because he's doing this, um, this, uh, this, um, possible, um, uh, what do you call it? Like t uh, team up with, Ta uh, with Tanahashi. I think he's mm -hmm. not going to be leaving yet, but I think it's possibly going to be in some time soon. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe like later on this year, not soon, but maybe on this year. Uh, Dom, mm -hmm. what do you think? I mean, I'm still like, I'm still dead set on the, on the, on the collaboration train like i don't i mean sure that like omega says he's leaving new japan and he, like he's gonna fi sign full-time to another another promotion but i don't i don't really think we're gonna see too many like big names leaving new japan at the moment to to either go to age a aew or like ww and stuff i mean I'm not like I haven't seen too many rumors of other people leaving as well, but I th I think we're just gonna see some more cross promotional work between New Japan and and either ROH or AEW, and just still like keep the the current roster there. Interesting, Moses, to close us off. Um, I think it's gonna be. Uh, Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson probably leaving next. But... <laughs> you just had to get one more, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I had to get one more. Matt, uh, uh... miss Matt Jackson, man. I can't believe Matt Jackson no. leaving, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, it, it's it's gonna be worse than uh, what's his name? I think it was uh, Jay O'Reilly or something like that. But uh, <laughs> no, nah, I, I think it's gonna. I I, I just like Dom said. I think. I think they're going to start um I think they're going to be honestly like cropping uh ten, like they're going to they're going to have their own farm system like a like a developmental and then make people uh you know up and comers go on their roster but I see more of a collaboration rather than people jumping ship. Mm, yeah, but if any if any cuz you you never really well you did um, because I was gonna say if you didn't specify on if it was NJPW or not, but I can I'll say this is that um, uh, Japanese wrestlers uh, leaving. I would say I I genu genuinely believe that Shinsuke is the next one. I don't think he's gonna be with WWE any anytime. Uh, I don't think he's gonna be with them once his contract is up because they really uh, underutilized him. You know his entire stint there, and when he was in in uh, New Japan, he was like a god. Oh yeah. So I think the next, yes, yeah, so I think the next uh, Japanese wrestler to sign 
would be Shinsuke. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've heard actually, like, I've actually heard two things here. I heard that Shinsuke is not going anywhere despite just being treated like shit uh, in in WWE, and I've heard uh, stuff that he is actually currently thinking about going back to New Japan. So I don't know. I mean, there's so many rumors out there right now about like his direction. I have to say that I think he might be giving them a little bit more of a chance before he just packs his bags and leaves and goes back to Japan. Yeah. Um, I think that he's going to give WWE a little bit more time to possibly maybe give him another title shot or maybe put the um, maybe the Universal or the uh, WWE Championship around his waist. Um, I think that he's going to you know give it a little bit more time and see, but I think that if they, this continues, they really out. dropped the ball on him. Like they they really fucked that up hard. What's really funny is that it happened so freaking quickly too. If if you remember, like one minute he's like you know fighting AJ, he won the World Rumble, he went up against AJ Styles at WrestleMania, and then all of a sudden he's just like punching balls, well, even, and then that's a, even that match well, itself, it, like that it, match it, was such a letdown compared to what we were expecting from it. Yeah, based off of their, their match up at Wrestle at the previous Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, well, I mean, also that should show you um, in this industry, one wrong move by booking can deter you for a long time. <laughs> that's very true. So. Yep. Yep. Well, that's basically all that we got for you today. On that's not the finish. We'll we'll catch you next time.